Good evening faithful viewer, sorry for the absence, um, after New York which was fantastic by the way, um, I took a wee illness which I'm still getting over, I've still got a bit of a sore throat so apologies if I, I start coughing. Um, as well as that after New York I um, went straight into work mode and for the last month my life has basically been eat, sleep, work, repeat. Um, I'm going to change things on the channel ever so slightly, I am going to always and only upload on a Friday. The reason for that being it should allow me to um, be more creative with my content and it means that I will be more consistent throughout the year because um, some weeks I'll, I, I used to post like three times a week and then other times I would like disappear for about a month. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, each week we'll discuss different things. Um, it'll either be a wrap up, a, a book haul, uh, a review, um, or some kind of TBR. One thing it will never be um, will actually be a tag. Tags I'm going to uh, leave as sort of bonus videos in case I get any more spare time. For instance, if I get an extra day off, which would be nice. Um, so that being said, let's crack on. I thought what I could do right now is um, show you what I'm reading at the moment. I am currently making my way through three books. You've likely seen all three of these in previous videos, uh, but we'll crack on. The first book I'm sort of chipping away at is The You by Caroline Kempness. Um, I tried to read this in New York, but New York was a very busy holiday for me. Um, the plane ride going there was fine, but the plane, plane ride coming back was like something out of a horror movie, so um, I wasn't able to do much reading, so we're currently chipping away at this. Um, it's about a bookseller who becomes obsessed with one of his customers and from there sort of grammar ensues. It's um, very gripping, I, thought, I think it's really enjoyable and I'm really liking it so far. As well as that, I'm also reading this, <coughs> excuse me, it is Winter in Texas, or Texas in Winter I should say. It's by RJ Scott, it's a male male romance, I hope you can see that, it's a rather bright cover isn't it? Now I was pretty sure after the first novel I wouldn't continue with this series, but I'd already bought the next two in the series, so we'll crack on with them, see how we go. In this instalment, the two main characters find that one of them has a, a daughter from a previous relationship, and it's just sort of how that affects their relationship. It's quite enjoyable for what it is, and like I say, I'll have that finished tonight, because they're quite short books and quite easy to read. As well as those two, I'm also reading Buddha Da by Anne Donovan, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's set in Glasgow. It follows a guy who has a sort of lifestyle change and he takes up Buddhism and it's sort of how that affects him and the people around him, particularly his family, his family dynamic. Um, it's really good, really enjoyable. It's, set, it's written in Glaswegian, which I really enjoy and it uh, makes it so much easier for me to read. So I'm really liking that too. So that's what I'm reading at the moment. <coughs> I was thinking while I have you here, um, I could discuss some of my favourite books that I read last year, maybe give you some recommendations. So I have a few, so we'll crack on with that. So the first one is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. Now I read this as sort of a buddy read with Dane over at Dane Reads, but he sort of powered through it quite quickly and then that encouraged me to sort of do the same. Um, I really enjoyed this, it's set in Illinois. And it follows two young lads who are, um, they become intrigued by a mysterious circus that sort of springs up in town. So they go and um, investigate <laughs> and drama ensues and adventure ensues. Um, it's very much, I suppose, a coming of age story in many respects. I find the, the setting wonderful. The characters are really well written. Uh, the drama is excellent and I just thought it was a joy to read. I'm sure Dane said that he preferred Fahrenheit 451 by the same author, so that's really saying something because I thought this was fantastic and he, if he reckons Fahrenheit 451 is better then that's got to be good isn't it? So we'll get to that in November, so I highly recommend this if, you, uh, if you're thinking of reading it. Next up we'll go for this big chunker. This is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Uh, I read this as part of March of the Mammoths, which was uh, organised by Jason over at Old Blues Chapter and Verse. Now previously I tried to read this about four times and I'd always sort of put it down, but 
Last year I made a genuine effort, I basically scrapped everything else and read this and I thought it was fantastic. It's very typical of um, Charles Dickens. It's essentially one person's life story up to a certain point, all the trials and tribulations he goes through. Uh, along the way he makes a lot of colourful characters. My favourite being uh, Mr Micawber. Um I particularly liked his story arc and how he sort of is a bit hard done by. A lot of that's down to himself to be honest, but he's a bit hard done by and it's nice to see at the end him get his comeuppance. Um, and that's, that was a joy to read. So I'm really glad I read this. I know it's a bit of a chunker, but don't let that put it off. Put you off. If you're into Charles Dickens, give this a bash. It's fantastic. Stay. Now next we have Bram Stoker's Dracula. I read this quite recently. It was a reread for me, but it's still fantastic. It holds up wonderfully well. Um, I don't suppose I need to say too much about this. Essentially, you've got Jonathan Harker who goes to Transylvania and he's essentially selling a property to the Count there. And from there, horror ensues. Um, I find the pacing in this fantastic. The atmosphere created is wonderful. Uh, I find that the um, the earlier sort of part of the book where Jonathan's basically trapped in Transylvania in the castle, I find that particularly creepy. Uh, the whole thing's a joy to read. Um, and like I say, it really holds up and it's worth the hype. So if you're considering reading this at some point, I highly recommend you do. Stay. If you hear a smash, they've all fallen. Next up, I'm going to recommend you The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, this had been recommended to me for a while and I eventually got to it in 2019. Uh, this again, wonderful book. Uh, really great sense of setting. Uh, great pacing. Uh, it follows a, a prince called Patroclus who's a sort of disgraced and he ends up being friends with Achilles. And it's essentially their story, their uh, their relationship, and the sort of adventure they go on their their whole life. Um, wonderfully paced. I found the ending particularly particularly gut wrenching because um, it seemed as if things were going to go awry at the very end, and that we weren't going to get the the ending I really wanted. And uh, we were okay by then. I would highly recommend this. I know she did so I'll say after this, but I don't really fancy that if I'm being honest. But that's what I would highly recommend. So there we go. Next up I'm going to recommend you this. It's Amistad Maupin's Tales of the City. Now this is another book that I've been told for years I should read because it's up my it's up my street essentially. Um, it follows a young lady who moves to San Francisco and it's essentially her getting used to city life and the colourful characters she sort of meets along the way. As well as that, you've got a kind of mystery um, surrounding one of the characters, um, Anna Madrigold. Uh, I thought this was fantastic. Really funny in parts, really heartfelt. Um, and I'm glad I read it. It reminds me a lot of Alexander McCall Smith's 44 Scotland Street series. Um, I believe that series takes a lot of cues from this series. Um, so I really enjoyed this and I can't wait to get to the next one. Um, I have some book tokens coming shortly, so hopefully... I'll be able to pick it up then. Now the final book I'm going to recommend you, I think we'll cut off here because the lighting's terrible, is this book here. It's a YA book. It's by N.R. Walker and it's called Upside Down. Now I picked this up as part of the uh, Queer Lit Readathon earlier last year. Um, it follows a young lad who is sort of used to having a lot of labels, things like you know geek and being gay. And he's getting used to this idea that he might be home, uh, might be asexual. Asexual um, is essentially where you don't have a sort of, I suppose, a physical attraction to other people. Um, that's maybe not the best sort of description of it, but it's that kind of thing. Um, and he goes to a support group and he finds there that there's a lad there that he, he sees on the bus all the time uh, who he has a crush on. And it's essentially their sort of story of them coming together and their relationship and it's it's really kind of heartfelt, it's really light, really enjoyable, it's a quite a quick read. Uh, it reminds me a lot of sort of Richard Curtis, you know, Notting Hill, Love Actually, that kind of thing. It scores more to that end of the, um, I suppose, the romance and it was a joy to read so I would recommend that to you too. So that's me. <coughs> that's episode one, we'll call it episode one. I was going to do something else but we'll call it episode one. 
I think next week what we'll discuss or what I'll discuss is maybe the, the series I want to read in 20, 2020, the ones I want to start, the ones I want to finish. Also some projects I want to do with certain authors on the channel. Uh, and then from there we'll see how things go. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Thank you for coming back. I know the lighting's a bit dodgy, but I've tried to film this about five times today and it always goes wrong. Um, so you're getting it quite late at night. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.